Hello, good evening. I'm Oral Gibbs, and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live. Coming to you live here from World Star Studios at Amsterdam Shopping Center. And with me this evening is none other than the leader of the United St. Martin People's Party, right? The United, United St. Martin's Martin Party. Party. Yeah. I would mix United St. Martin Party. Party. Right. Mr. Franz Richardson, you're a member of parliament. You all have some busy days is it with the budget? Well, definitely, Earl. Good evening and good evening to your televiewers. Mm. Um, it is a, 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 how would I put it, nights of um, long nights, long days in Parliament uh -huh. dealing with the budget of the country. Um, it's ongoing. It is something that we got to get done before a time frame. So we are busy with it as we speak. All right. So, so now, MP Richardson, when you look at all the things that um, you've gone through, a number of budget debates, right? This is oh, yeah. This, um, since 2003, I've been in there. Um, a number of budget debates is not the, the first time, but now we are dealing with the fourth, if I'm not mistaken, country budget for country St. Martin that we are dealing with. So, so you have 12 years that you've been um, elected to office in? Well, yes, about 12 years. Yeah, OK. You know, a lot of people sometimes feel like, how you feel as a politician because you transition from the old Nelson Tillys to what we are now. But people say sometimes members of parliament still act like the old island council days. Well, I think it, um, because you still have a lot of the old, old faces uh -huh. um, <laughs> who have been there even much longer than me that's still there. And they're still seeing those faces from the island council. So it's feel as if the transition has not been transitioned the way it should be. Uh -huh. But nevertheless, I think um, this term around, you're seeing a difference in how members of parliament now is behaving and taking their job differently. Now, you are now supporting the government as a leader of the US party, right? Yep. And so um, maybe you want to explain with us what happened, how well, you made the decision to join the government? Well, definitely. I think um, over the weeks and uh, months I've been approached, um, the party been approached by the leader of the UP, um, Mr. Thierry Heilgo, um, asking us to be part of his government. Um, we, we won't go back in election time what happened, but nevertheless, um, he came and he asked us what's a, uh, if we have any interest of supporting the government, his government. Um, we sat down as a political party, look at it, and had a long discussion of what it is we want to achieve for St. Man as a new political party. While we all um, have our differences of opinion, where could we see us aligning ourselves on the things that we want to achieve um, in this new government that is here? We was offered the Ministry of Justice. We sat down, we discussed what are the things that need to be done for justice if we join this coalition. So we had a long discussion as a political party and myself along with the advisors and we went through a number of scenarios what are the possibilities? Even seeing the issue with the Dutch government on integrity mm. coming down so hard on St. Martin, um, a young political party taking on a portfolio like this at this time. I said, guys, there is no better time than now if we want as a political party to prove to the people, ensure the people that we are capable of handling such irresponsibility at this present time. So we decided that we will support the UP. Um, a part of the government, we have joined on. He have um, offered us the portfolio of justice, and we look forward and continue in how we gonna move this country where the crime is concerned on this island, where the issue of daylight robbery, all of these things is taking place. We believe that we had the discussion of the camera system oral. Well, so Phillips often Park? we talk about this camera system yeah. and Phillipsburg to give some sort of eye view protection because that is what society has become now in any new mm. city or any town. So th that is one of the projects that we're going to be pushing straight ahead after this budget is the camera system to make sure that it's done. We no longer can continue to talk. We talk about it, we talk about it, but it's not happening. It must get done within the shortest mm. period of time. And that is one of the things that we decide as a political party, let's start doing something. Because if we can't put men and women on the ground, Let's put eyes in the, in the skies that could monitor what is happening on our island. And those, those are the things that we believe. And also to look at how could we make life better for our men and women in the, in the, in the police force, in justice, 
in also in immigration, in customs, on and overall, what it is we can do for them to make life for them better, even though it is not only about a salary, an increase in salary. How could we make life for our people better? Because everybody look at justice, well, you can't make life better for your people. Yes, you can. You can make life for your people in any ministry as long as you have the willpower. And one of the things that we are looking at also is homes for them. How do we, as um, St. Martin, could do the same thing of the Netherlands until he's in the dead and the day is gone by, where homes was provided for police officers who came up from Curacao and even those on St. Martin got the opportunity to live in those homes. Let's put back that program in place. So one, those are one of the things that we are looking at as a political party, to find a location where we could develop homes mm -hmm. for our people. We are busy on it. We, we hit the ground running, um, having discussions as a political party to find location, to find places who has land available mm. that we could do a number of things for our people. You know, MP Regis, I, I want to add here because I got a lot of heat and pressure from people after um, one of the members of your party uh, left mm -hmm. to go with the, um, the, the op. And then a member of the DP party left and I got criticism again because they felt that I did not do what I did to say Leona Marlon Mitch was uh, uh, making her move. Mm -hmm. I try to explain to people what happened and also that I believe that if, if a party wants to join, it shouldn't be a problem. I, I think have an issue when an individual exactly. goes on the own. I, think the I don't people think of people Simant, understand that. I think the people of Siman has a misconception what is taking place. The difference between my person this time here now forming a government with Tia Heil is a political party yeah. who is forming government. It's not Franz Richardson. It's a political party, USP, that we ran on. Mm -hmm. Franz Richardson didn't run on National Alliance or the Democrat or no other political. We ran as USP. I think that is one of the differences that people need to understand. Leona Marlin and Cornelius Weaver ran on political parties and left the political parties to join a government. It's two different things. Yeah. I think if people probably have saw the National Alliance join UP, it wouldn't have looked as jumping. Because I heard my good friend from OSP <laughs> talking about who jump and who now political party jump in. Uh -huh. But the idea of, of political parties be able to come together to form a government. Because no, no political party won the election outright. But it happened in Holland too? That happened exactly. All it happened all over the world where political parties come together with other political parties to form a government. And I think the maturity of this country needs to start being more mature in understanding. And I think that is the problem we face. Or, and I said it on a radio program with a radio host. I said, you guys has a job to educate the population, not just incite the population to make your program popular by inciting oh. things in order to generate this type of sensitivity. I said, explain to people that USP didn't jump and go nowhere. USP is a political party registered by the Electoral Council, and it's a body that joined with the UP party. It's not an individual. Franz Wittes is not the individual who was with National Alliance. Franz Wittes ran on the USP as leader right. of the USP. And that is the difference that, that took place. It's not Franz Wittes. And a lot of people feel as if I betray the National as if I'm still with the National Alliance. And that's the sentiment I'm feeling out there by a number of people. <laughs> they still feel I, am, I ran with the National Alliance. Mm. No, I did not. We ran with the USP party. Uh -huh. I am the leader of the USP party. And USP party made a decision to join the government. You got to remember the people in national, they, they love you. Well, I understand that. And I, know, and I feel they're, they're concerned in, uh -huh. in what, is, what is happening on this island. But they could rest assured. Um, Franz Richardson would always remain who I be. Mm -hmm. And the things that I believe in would always continue to champion where that's concerned. But one need to understand, you can't do anything from the opposition benches for your people. You want to be able to contribute something from the executive side also from the legislative side. And I think that is the opportunity that we got and we made that decision because Tia Heilga realized also it's not only about the other two individuals. He wanted to broaden his government with a political party to be part of it. And that is what he did. You know, um, having the Ministry of Justice is a very powerful portfolio. It is. It is. Because and then when people look at me, they say, oh, France's economic affairs, what it is that France is going to do it justice. And I said, I said, give me that opportunity and I will show everyone mm. it is not about Franz Richardson. It's about a political party taking a decision to take the Ministry of Justice. I might be the face, but it's a political party of advisors and everyone behind of me 
who gives advice that I have to adhere to and follow. Mm -hmm. There's no one man show. There's a political organization that I believe in that functions the right way, that we have a board, we have advisors, and we listen to these things on the decisions that need to be made. So the justice portfolio, yes, it is a, a huge wow. portfolio, and I enjoy seeing USP political party having that portfolio now and trying to do the right things uh -huh. for our people. You know, this was how you guys were able to keep this thing so quiet because very few people knew what was going on. Well, the thing is, I, I made a promise to keep it quiet between myself and the leader and our board mm. that this should not be put in public. This was going on for a long time, Oral. It wasn't today. Um, it, we had a long time as a political party really going through it, accepting it in order for what it is we really want to achieve. So, so long we knew about this thing happening. So then we decided, you know something, in the best interest of this country, let's participate and move in this country forward. And that is the reason why it came out after, um, f after so long uh -huh. we've been uh, having these discussions and the offer was on the table. I smile every time I watch um, MP Heilega because <laughs> he and I know uh -huh. um, how long this was, was going on. And um, it was something that he said that he need time also to sit with his whole political party organization structure to uh -huh. inform them of what was taking place. You know, um, we have some big problems in the island these days. And one I want to ask you about is the time share problem. MP Richardson, this is a serious problem. This or, is, if we're not careful, or it hurt us. I, I, on the floor of parliament today, I told the Council of Ministers, I said, we don't realize what we are facing where timeshare is concerned. We saw the caravansary collapse again with over 2,000 timeshare owners um, who own a week on St. Martin lost their investment. We saw now RCA now having a problem with another property on this island. We saw where Pelican itself went through a similar situation like that, where timeshare is concerned. Earl for years, St. Man has been known as, a, as the, let's say, the incubator of timeshare, the one, the forefront of timeshare development. For many years, St. Man have been known for that. Going back to Martin Fleetland. Exactly, for Martin Fleetland days of Pelican. Right. I remember those days like yesterday. So today now, when we look at what, we ha what has happened to our product timeshare, it is a shame to see what is happening. And what hurt me even more is that legislation was presented <clears throat> by my former colleague, um, MP Roy Mallon, MP Leroy De Weaver, to, to Parliament mm -hmm. concerning the timeshare law that is being proposed. Today now we hear, after they done left office, the timeshare law has been put in now over a year now. Here comes one of our high councils, now says the legislation has to be done in Dutch. Oral, you want to wait till now to say that? Why couldn't we have known that the day when it was submitted in order for us to have dealt with it that it should have been in Dutch? This is something that hurts so much to see that we lose one year. In order for the law to go through the proper procedures, it's going to take even a little longer than that for that law to be finalized. So, so while we was busy fixing something to fix the problem, here again, we put up in a snag where the timeshare law is concerned. You know, I, I'm not a lawyer, but what I understand is that if you have a law, the Dutch version takes precedent over the English version, and maybe that's the reason why no. Well, the reason why I think from speaking to some people is they're saying, listen, the courts and the high courts right. deal in Dutch. Um, the Dutch language and the Dutch wording is different than the English word and the meaning. So you could have some contradiction, let's say, with the English meaning of the word. So I think that is the problem that they see can happen with the law. So that is the reason why they're saying, but I'm saying, fine. But at least we should have known this from the get-go and have somebody translate it in the Dutch and it would have been almost ready to be dealt with by Parliament and passed. And at least we could have proved to all of those persons who are losing their timeshare 
answered, Martin, mm. that we are working in your interest. Right now, I understand the feeling of these people. St. Martin is getting such a bad name where timeshare is concerned. And the average person on St. Martin don't understand this because they're probably not under, being part of what is happening. So we need, as politicians, need to explain the urgency of this matter, that we need to deal with it as quick as possible to protect our timeshare industry on this island. Now, Caravanserai, now the former Caravanserai, uh, sat, is still sitting on land belongs to the people of St. Martin. Well, definitely, or I think it's domain land mm. that it's um, sitting on. The bank auctioned it. It now auctioned to a new owner, has it to be developed. I think what is happening, we are seeing they're going through all of these issues. But unfortunate, St. Martin is the one who is suffering. And government, who owns the land, needs to sit even with this new investor and tell this new investor there with some demands. Or all too often we are seeing investors speculate on properties and don't develop them. Too often we are seeing this. And we need to get serious where that's concerned, as St. Martin too. It is fine to bring investors, but investors need to be serious and, and understand the urgency when you speculate on properties. Because we don't have vast amount of properties where we could develop hotels any longer. All of it is gone. Whatever is there now is what we got. But we need to make sure we protect what is left and we need to be part of it in a sense as government to sit with the investors and to be serious to invest and make sure your product is ready mm. to be able to present to the public. And that is something that we need to sit with investors and get done. You know, Emperor Richardson, uh, I listened to you and something came to my mind because there are a lot of people that hold government long lease land. I also, in my name. And there's also a huge piece of government long lease land, almost half a million, almost half a million square meters that was issued many years ago where Mahaway is right yes, now. Yes, up on the ridge. And they're paying one cent. Now tell me, that is all the discussions going on and in, in, But in we, presented, we presented this thing in Parliament recently here in the Central Committee. I said, listen guys, we realize in this budget here that they want to, that is being presented, they have land tax. Talking about land tax now in this budget. That's crazy. Or all, there's no way I'm supporting anything called land tax and all people of this country. So we told them they have to take it out. And they agreed, everybody basically agreed, um, who's supporting the government, that it has to come out where it pertains to land tax. All of a sudden, it sneaked into the budget, a new um, revenue coming in 2016 or whenever for land tax and all people. I'm saying absolutely not. I'm not going to support anything that says land tax. The only thing our people own is the little land that they got. Now you want to tax it and take it away from them? I'm saying no. Maho Ridge sitting there for umpteen years, one cent a square meter. Million dollar homes, million dollar condominiums is being built. It is time for them to pay a fair share, just like the small local man. And we are saying the government has to look into it. No longer can government speculate and allow um, people with money to own government land and pay one cent. I mean, when you have that size of property, over 495,000 square meters for one cent, while we, the other natives, have to pay eight and 10 yes, gallons sir. a square meter, yeah. that's not, that's not. It right. is not fair, and we keep continue hammering on this. I think um, government itself has to come clean and has to sit with these individuals who own, go who, own who sitting on government land in order for them to pay a fair share. It can no longer continue the way it's being done overall. You and I, who probably got a piece of government domain land, is paying much more than they are ever paid since they got theirs. Young people get domain land and Point Blanche couldn't even afford the canon. Some of them gave up the land. Because of the canon. Because of the canon, they can't afford to pay three, 4,000 gillers yeah. a year because they can't afford it. So that is one of the major problems that we see. Don't just put it on the people them themselves who can't afford it. Put it on those who you have given the long lease for so many years. Because even Malabé, pieces of Malabé sitting also, on domain yeah. land, mm -hmm. a lot of that area down there where they have all these multi-million dollar homes and development sits on long lease government land. Yeah. Why can't they pay a fair share in order to contribute to the government and its budget? So, so then, you all need to look at how much revenues these long lease properties 
given out to these very wealthy, wealthy people can bring in to patch up the hole in the budget? Well, definitely. I think um, that is something that must be done. I will have the discussion with the, the minister mm -hmm. of Romy to start looking at that possibility. Because here is where this problem occurs. Oral. For many years, we are looking how to make some money from, let's say, those homes that is being rented weekly, monthly, and we can't find the right, um, let's say, legislation, a mix of how to do it, mm -hmm. because there was no surety of how you'll be able to know when it was rented, when it wasn't rented. But if all of them that we know of is sitting on government domain land, and he paying, Scott, zero, one cent, one cent, mm -hmm. then let's increase it there, and then we show sure to know that we're going to get something at least from them. So that is a start that we need to look at. But it is going to be a proposal I'm going to propose to see how it can be done. Because no longer or older, we have to go after the small man, the small woman. It is the same people over and over. And I believe we need to make that change to give our people some sort of incentive, a break, one way or the other. You know, um, back in the 1980s, I went to Pelican and I had an interview with Martin Fleetman. And I can remember him sit, we sat outside, cameras rolling and everything. He was bragging on the millions of dollars he made as the first person in timeshare in mm -hmm. Zimbabwe. Let's fast forward now to Caravanserai, government land that was also illegally divided. Mm -hmm. where, where did all this money go? Because that person made money. Well, of course, those persons in those times who were speculating with the property made a lot of money in it. Um, I think the time we are living in, we need to figure out as government, because I understood, if I'm not mistaken too, that the canon years on it is going to be expiring soon on caravans today. Right. And I understand the whole issue of, oh, the investor bought it, and one thing after the other, that government, no, government need to sit with the investor, come to a, a whole solution of how we're going to solve the problem at caravans today, develop it, and make it one of our flagship hotels on this island. I hear a number of um, discussions concerning the individual who buy it, that he's a serious investor, he serious want to develop it, and he wants to build something nice. Power beat him. If that is what he wants to do, let's do it. But let's not speculate on the property for the next best sale that you could get for it. We need some serious hotel. We need some serious job opportunity for our people. There's another product, property that wants to develop, and I'm looking at it, and soon... It might be developed in the coming months they want to break ground. Up at the harbor where Royal Caribbean mm -hmm. um, has a property, they want to build a hotel, they want to build a, so a number of property shops, and whatever it is they want to put up there. We are saying it's time to develop properties to create jobs. Our young people need work. Definitely. We no longer can not play with those, those properties and not allow them to develop. And, and I'm saying I don't care who it is or who it's not. Let's get it done. Let's get some jobs for our people. And that's all I want to see happen. And then I could say, Oral, I have done my job. What about, I've heard all these rumors about the hard rock and purchasing Pelican. You're in government. <laughs> what, what's going on there? Oral, those days, are, those are speculators. Yeah. Again, there was a bunch of speculators speculating how they could maneuver themselves to take over probably the property and get it for peanuts. Mm. Because from what I understood, they wasn't even ready to put up the money to do what needs to be done. They disappear and gone. So what we have seen over the years, Earl, is a bunch of speculators come in here, mm. sit down, probably wine and dine government officials, take them for lunch, take them to the blow a lot of hot air, and make them feel as if something is going to happen. Uh -huh. too, many, too often politicians run out through the door and, oh, we got this coming, we got that coming. I mean, look, it's not, it's not there. This is what's been happening to Sin Man over the last years, a bunch of speculators. Government has to come with a policy on what government would like to see done. If you don't have a policy, you ain't going nowhere. Mm. And I think that was the major problem where we saw where Pelican is concerned, where we see Caravanza is concerned. But it's sad that we see what happened to Caravanza, a property that for many years have been talked about. And then we thought we see development happening, we see things happening. All of a sudden, it auctioned. All of a sudden, the timeshare owners got nothing, lose everything. These are people who've been coming here when you hear them for almost 10, 15, 20 years or all. Some of them from generation to generation pass on timeshare who have been coming to St. Martin 
every day in the newspaper, there's an article about timeshare in St. Martin. Every day. And I'm saying, we don't see it. We don't see the backlash that we are getting for St. Martin. And that is the reason why we are saying, let's get legislation in place to protect these people that when they buy their property, they buy their week, it is notarized by a deed by the notary. It must be notarized by the notary when they purchase it or that was never done. So that is the reason why the people who bought the timeshare don't have a deed, don't have nothing notarized that they own a week and the property. What do you think about government owned companies and how healthy are they? Well, government owned companies, I believe, has a role to play and continue to play a role seems as if that those companies has a monopoly. There's only one airport we could build, that is there. There's only one harbor we could build, that is there. There's only one GB that is providing electricity, that is there, and there's the water company, that is there. Um, while we have Telem, we have competition, I believe that these government-owned companies must carry the responsibility in order to support government in the correct way. And here's where government has a role to play. The government needs to come with a policy is either we're going to get dividends or a concession fee. But I believe a concession fee is even better than dividends because the company could always say, we make no, no money, yeah. so you can't get no dividends. But in the meantime, government allowed the companies mm -hmm. to use government money in order to expand and build and do different things because the tax, the departure fee tax, is a government head tax. For many years, it had belonged to government. Government allowed the harbor, allows the airport to collect it in order to put back into the company, reinvest, and to pay and take care of these properties. Now it's time that government needs a return from these companies. These companies are doing tremendously well. Nobody is saying to kill them, to take them out of business. But they need to realize the company is not yours. The company belongs to the people of this, this country here. They have a responsibility to the people of this island that if they are doing well, give government some money so government could do well and take care of the responsibility of the social needs of this country. Mm. That is what it, it needs to belong to, uh -huh. that once we get the money, we put it into social pro projects for the people of this country uh -huh. to make life better for them. Because I don't believe just taking the money, dump it in the budget of in, in government, and then government also go and squander it into the wrong areas. But what, what about... Um Tailem, because here you have Tailem, but you also have Tailem, uh, the Bureau of Telecommunication, that are paid for all cell phones. Everyone have a handheld cell phone, or oh, cell phone pays a tax on the bill every month. How are you going to separate that? You think well, Tailem should still pay a concession fee? Well, Tailem must pay a concession fee just like any other telephone mm -hmm. company operator on this island. What you have, the Bureau is a regulator that regulates the industry of telecommunication. That is a, two separate things where the, the, the Bureau now gets money from the different um, telephone companies, which goes to run their affairs, their monthly affairs, and, the, amount and money. the money that they left back goes into government's coffers. That is how it's set up, that whatever money remains goes into government on, from the Bureau of Telecommunication and Post. So then that is how it is. Like that, it's an it's a entity that now um, all it has in the entity is basically, listen, the, it runs its day-to-day -day financials, its monthly obligation, and whatever money is over, supposed to go to but, government. But they're coming on a scrutiny now because the purchase of that building now, I understand. The well, of course. I, I think it was a good purchase from my point of view. Um, unfortunately, we didn't purchase the entire building. The only purchase, I think, four or five floors. Except the floor. Um, except floor. the ground, the ground floor, floor, that was remained with the, with the owner of the building. And I believe in, in the coming years, you should purchase the whole entire building and done with it. What happened is, is that government should have moved a number of the, um, departments in the building to occupy it. It didn't happen. And that was one of the problems, because I believe that Bureau is not just one entity. Bureau has a lot of work to do when it continues to build the Bureau of Telecommunication. Because, first of all, the Bureau is the one who will regulate, let's say, GB with the tariffs, mm -hmm. with helping all of these different things. Because there's more services the Bureau can carry out. Mm -hmm. But it needs the space, it needs the possibility 
to grow. Is that a private owned company? No, no, no. The bureau belongs to it's a government. You sure about that? Yes, it you is. You sure about MBA? Guaranteed. I was the one who who signed off on it when it was commissioned I at the time. I, the reason I'm being sarcastic. I know, but it, it's a government owned company. I, I hear people inside there saying, We don't work for government. People right in there saying well, that. Well, they, they got news for them. It belongs to government. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they, they, everybody could say what they want, how it's set up, how it's put together. Mm. It's a government-owned entity. When you look at this island, there's so much potential. It seems that we, the people that live here and from here, we don't realize it. But that is the problem, Oral. Um, it has so much potential, but our people are not benefiting from the potential of this island. Um, our people are the ones who are left behind too often. We need to make that change where we start to look at our people to empower them in the development of this country. I talked about the roads in Phillipsburg with the bricks. I believe if we give that opportunity to the young boys mm -hmm. in Phillipsburg to fix the bricks, fix those wavy bricks that cars drive you, you swear you're on a rough seas or something like that. Uh -huh. Simple things that we can do for our people. Give them the tools in order for them to make a decent living. If they need to go train and send them by Nepal, we build a technical school by Nepal. Teach them how to lay bricks. And having issues now, too. Yes, I know, but let's get some people who could teach them mm. and give them the opportunity to go and fix and carry out the whole walks in Phillipsburg where the bricks are concerned. When, when Rhodes and Allen was doing those bricks, it was a young, local young boys who was doing it. When Rhodes didn't bring in an engineer to lay the bricks, and I know the boys them, because those are the same boys who came to me or else we don't need to go on the Wind Road. We can do it ourselves. We have our own company. Mm. Let's give it to them. Lead them, go ahead, section off Phillipsburg and different zone section to, for that project. Mm. Give a group of them the opportunity to do their part and pay them. Set up their, lead them have their company. Government give them the opportunity to compact the dot, make sure that it's solid again. Put down the bricks, put the dot, and compact it. That is all it is. It ain't no rocket science that we need that we, the young people of this country, can oh. do it. We always been doing it all wrong. We don't need to bring in anyone to, and that is a start in Phillipsburg in order to fix the road in Phillipsburg. We don't, shouldn't give it to no multi-million dollar company. But Why should we do that? But we don't believe in our seven sub This is a change that though. we need to make because that is the reason why we as politicians are always getting, let's say, blamed for a lot of things because a lot of us sit there and don't do the things that we need to. We keep talking and talking, but it's not being done. But that is the reason why I'm saying give us an opportunity, and that's the opportunity that I took to be in office in order to see what I can do for our people where it pertains to like the justice ministry. But there's more areas that we can work on. There's more things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Let's start to do it with our people first, make sure that they are taken care of, and then we could look outside of that to see what needs to be done. Okay, let's take a call here. Oral Kipps Live, you're on caller, hello? You're on live, caller, hello? Is there a caller? Mm -hmm. You're on live, Paul. Good yeah. evening. Good evening. Can you turn your TV off, please, sir? All right. TV is off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go right ahead, sir. It's nice to hear you and the Honorable Francis conversing. Now that we are getting the backlash is all over, front, left, side, all over. And only after having jumped there and jumped there that the honorable Francis is seeing and talking now. That is a step late. What is going to be done about that thing about God Island? Must that remain so? We want that completely flat as it was. So that we can enjoy and see the island, the, the other side of the island as we used to. We don't want to compromise that this is going to use this. Way. It's completely high down. It is terrible. Okay, so, so thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Doc. And um, again, like I said, Oral, everybody seems to talk about this thing. I jump in here, jump in there. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, um, people need to understand that Franz Richardson ran on a political party. Um, and then Doc should know that himself as one of those who follow politics. We ran on a USP, us party. Um, we didn't jump here, jump there, jump nowhere. Um, I started a new political party and we made a decision as a political party. One, yes, Doc, I agree with you with the, the dump heap on Phillipsburg. 
that is an eyesore. I believe that it had every minister attention who hold the portfolio of Romy, which was William Malin, which was Thea Heiliger, which was Maurice Lake. Every one of them um, have their ideas what they want to do with it. And I look forward and seeing which one is going to get the job done where it pertains to moving that landfill from there in a sense of cleaning it up and putting the incinerator that's supposed to come there for the garbage in that area. That is what the proposal are. And I hope that we continue to get that done and clean up that mess on Pan Island once and for all. You think that could be done, uh, MB? Of course, um, or, but it needs the will of the individuals. But these things has to be publicly open that the people could see exactly what it is is going to be done. Those things can be hide in secrecy and then come out in front of the public. You got to be open with these things and inform the public what are the consequences of this type of development that you're going to build there and how is it going to work in the interest of the people. Is GB going to, let's say, buy the electricity? How is it going to be done? Mm. How is it going to be worked out? I think there's a number of dynamics in this thing that needs to be done that is being worked on. I know with William Allen, MP William Allen, who was there at the time, he was busy with it. It was almost complete. I know um, MP T. Heilger, when he was there, he was busy with it. Almost, but keep every, every time it changed, government changed, something changed. Every time government changed, something changed. Right. So these are the problems that we go through over and over where it pertains to uh, moving forward on this project. Yeah, it's a massive, I'm, in fact, I just put it up on the computer and explain now that as you speak. Let's take a call for you. Oral Gibbs, 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 Gibbs live on call. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, you have a question for MP Richardson? Go ahead, sir. Can you, um, can you move around a little bit because your, your, your cellular phone, you're calling a cellular phone, right? It's breaking up. Uh, your signal is not... I am now. Okay, much better. Okay, thank right. you for that. Thank you, sir. Listen, I have been going to Anguilla for two days, three days. I am paying $25 U.S. to get a three-month license to drive. I go to Dominica and pay $30 to drive and figure the same thing. Why are we getting millions of tourism on this island and there is no one to see where we are charging the guests at least 25 guilders for three months permit to drive rental cars? And because we, we are short of money, I'd like to hear my response from the, from the MP. Okay. Well, definitely, um, um, he's on the MAC. Uh, where it's concerned, there is legislation that came to Parliament by the Minister of Justice. He's busy with it. Um, I hope within short that will be completed and that will be enforced. I, I think um, he, he's correct with what he's saying, that that is a source of revenue generated by the tourists. When they come, they rent a car, they pay for a three months um, right away, a driver's license, um, that Anguilla, the most of the British islands does it. So I think, yes, um, we are busy with it. We dealt with it the last four years. Um, um, it started, if I'm not mistaken, with um, Roland Duncan. Now uh, Minister Dennis Richardson is busy with it. I spoke with him um, a week ago about it. Mm -hmm. It should be on its way coming to Parliament that now we would be able to um, charge that that fee because it's under budget. But what about you know our neighbors, our cousins across the border, the French side? Um, they don't have that, and is there any well, way to work? Well, that shouldn't be a problem because where you rent the car is where you pay. Because if you rent the car on a Dutch side, um, it's a Dutch rental car. You pay. You must have that because if you have a French car, you might not have it. The problem is. What are you going to do with those French cars that is being rented on the Dutch side well, that's if it's not do. being charged? That is the hiccup that you would have, that those companies now will have to be monitored and find out from the tourists when they rent the car, where did you rent the car? Did you rent on the uh -huh. Dutch side or you rented on the French side? And that is where you would have but, to deal with the, the car rental companies who, who, uh -huh. who don't obey the law but, uh, on the, the driver's license. But then, MP Richardson, I think you're all going to have to go out and take a serious look at the car rental companies. I know some that are charging people 10% 10, 10 turnover tax. They're charging all kinds of fees. All of this is going into the owners of these car rentals, and the government is not getting anything. And there is a loophole. They're going to get around it. If you would introduce that license, which 
I've spoken about many times here too, because I, when I travel to those British, uh, former British islands, I have to buy a license. But they're going to find a way, again, because of all those French size, uh, French side cars, to go right around it, and the government is not going to get any money. Well, I believe that government could create a few jobs by making sure hire, let's say, inspector patrols to monitor that situation, that they would be able to go by the car rentals and monitor and check. Uh, uh, I believe that we need to put a heavy fine MP. on those car rental who does it and try to get away with it. MP. That's the only way you'll be able to monitor it the way we, we want to get it done. MP Richardson, with all due respect, we have, we have a, a control on food and inspectors that are doing a horrible job. Well, of course, because the thing is you have the same inspectors who are not properly informed or properly doing their job or too laid back. Or maybe somebody in the department is telling them not to do their job and carry out their job. I'm saying these, these type of inspectors need to be hands off. They know what they got to do, go and do your job. And politicians shouldn't now interfere if they go by their friend or go whosoever to, be an, to inspect to make sure that the food is at a standard and a quality way it's supposed and to that's be. That's why people are complaining because people are saying they're not doing their job of inspecting and some of them are collecting from these supermarkets, et cetera, getting food for free. I'm sorry they got to say this is it, facts, and we got proof on it. This is what's happening. But so that is sad people, world people that these things in this day and age that this is going on in St. Martin, we need to look at it as a government, as parliamentarians, and call, probably call for investigation in these type of situations that is going on because it's not right that businesses are getting away with bad food and selling it to our people and not making sure that the quality of food is being, let's say, presented in a proper manner for our people now. And you go across the border in Marigot, oh, that's strict, a different, strict, it's a different control. And they're now enforcing that the product must be French. Exactly. That's what it does over there. Can by it? Exactly. And it needs to be a special temperature in the coolers and the right. freezers. I, I knew about that. Okay. Uh, oral gives... The recording. Oh, uh, all on there. You know, and, and so what I'm saying is that, you know, look, we all like old people. We all Samaritan people. But I think people, if you hire to do a job as a controller, and you're supposed to control supermarket to make sure things are right, that you do your job. Of course, you may have one or two, but when it gets so widespread that the public loses complete confidence in these people, these civil servants, then I have a problem with it. Well, of course, because um, those are the people who are working for the people. And if they're not doing their job right, then we have a serious problem. Or, yeah. Because that is where integrity comes in. And that's the reason why you have all this problem with integrity. Because it's not only the politicians, it's not only this one, but now you're seeing it throughout the whole apparatus where you're seeing bad apples mushrooming and making it worse for others. Yeah. Oral, Oral Gibbs Live and Caller, hello. Yeah, good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Just make a gift one I just listened to the... Uh, wow, the, uh, you, you, you sell, can, you move, can you move around a little bit? Your cell there because we're getting, you're breaking up. Yeah. Okay. Can okay, you hear me now? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, with the government situation, what I think is that government have to look. Um, that's a good uh, idea to generate uh, revenue. But what I think is, is that uh, with the rental cars also, the government should have a policy in place that no cars with French number plate should be rented on the south side. It's simple as that. And uh, there's a time that you have to pull a line. You have to work together, yes. But there are certain situations that you have to take crucial decisions to be able to it to work. And I think uh, that's the only way that's possible. Well, definitely. I totally agree with the, with the caller that cars that is rented on the Dutch side should carry a Dutch number plate. Even, you know what the funny thing? Even companies that carry a Dutch company, some of their rental cars mm. has on French number plate. Right. And this thing has a lot to do with the defeats. The defeats um, purchasing of cars that you can't switch a number plate, it must remain French number plate. Absolutely not. We have nothing to do with that. We are saying, listen, it's a Dutch num license, a Dutch number plate, Dutch company renting. You need to pay your fare, and that is what it's supposed to be. I'm going to make it easy on you, uh, MP Franz Richardson. You're a member of parliament. Maybe government need to make it very clear a policy throughout government that when they rent cars, the rental is not a French number plate because see many government departments renting cars with French number plates. Well, I was the one who brought it up at one time that I even saw the police um, driving French French number plate, and I asked the minister at one time, Minister, 
are you aware that um, your department, people are renting French number plate cars and driving around? Police officers. Um, I guess every, everybody looks at the difference and try to make a different statement that, yeah, maybe they're undercover, but all you're doing undercover on the French number plate car <laughs> and trying to stop people. I'm saying no. If we want to get serious, let's get serious. Government must lead by example where these things are concerned. And I believe that that is something we need to look at and see how we can fix because it was an issue I brought up and presented on the floor of Parliament mm -hmm. because I saw it. Okay. Let's take a call for you. Oral gives live and call. Hello. 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 Good, good night. Good, good night. Good evening, good night. yes. Yes. Uh, I see you have uh, my minister, my, my friend there as a minister now. Now you're going to write the Calypso on him now? Well, I don't know because what happened? He got about 25 herbalized votes. <laughs> since he stopped eating the roti, you understand me? I know what happened, but it looked like easy going on the other side, like we have to be on the other side too. <laughs> well, um, you, you still got to remain with the party. The party still exists. The party is still there. The party, the party is still there. The party okay. hasn't given up. The party will remain what it is, and we're going to stay strong. Yeah, well, okay. And I, I wonder if we could talk Dutch, because I understand it have one of them fellow inside the parliament. You can't talk Dutch. I don't know why the hell he put himself in that position for. <laughs> so you see, you're going, put, you're going to put the man on the spot. In the well, <laughs> not on the spot. He put in, we on a spot. Well, uh, well, one thing for sure, you could rest assured, France could speak Dutch and understand Dutch. Yeah, well, um, that is a good, good topic because I think fish have something on that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the yeah, Calypso. I don't neither fish or fowl, so I know what's happening. I believe the Calypso is going to have a lot of lyrics for this time around coming up. <laughs> I, think, I think so, but I like to business there for somebody, but I'm not taking part, you know. I may do a little, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, guess appearance. Oh, but oh, that's okay. always good magic. One way or the other, you got to participate. You know, use Mr. Carnival one way or the other. I know, I know, I know. Anyway, let me keep you, I know time coming short. But, uh, but my partner there, I'm hoping to see him going, thinking, all right, it's but, only good. My next partner will be the vote for. With the bakery down in the in uh, down in Dutch Quarter here, I can't I can't give too much too much too much advertisement, you know. <laughs> hey, man, right, take care. All right. good, good, take hey. care. You're watching uh, Oral Gibbs live. You're on live caller. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. You're on air live. Yes, um, I was calling concerning the the French supper place. Okay. I am a citizen of St. Martin. I was born on St. Martin also, and um. I know if, if I am on the airport, if I go to rent a car, whatever, or if a taxi comes out with a French number plate and the controller tells me I have to pay that one, I'll say, no, I'll sit down and wait until one comes up with a Dutch number plate. I said, because I do not live on the French side. Listen, my grandmother was from the French side. I don't have nothing against the French, but I am living on the Dutch side and the turnover tax and everything, they have to pay too. So why are I going to support a French number plate for whatever reason? When I go to rent a car too, I say don't give me nothing with a French number plate because I do not want nothing with a French number plate, but with a Dutch number plate because I know where that money is supposed to go to. I don't know for a French number plate, you're charging me turnover tax and all kind of thing. Where is that money going? That's all I have to say. All right, thanks well, for calling. Well, it is a good way she's looking at it um, from that standpoint that she's looking out for the growth of St. Man to make sure that um, money is contributed back into the coffers of government. And, and it's, a, it's a nice way to look at it um, where that's concerned. There's, there's, there's one problem I see from a personal point of view because, you know, my family come from both sides of this Well, island. both of us is like that. <laughs> and um, even, her, even she said that right. herself. At the end of the day, yeah. um, it's just that she looks at it in a yeah. different uh, perspective. Not that she has something against the friends or anything like that. She just look at it that um, she wants her money to be contributed to the coffers of the Dutch side, which I could understand with her. And I think it, it is something that we need to look at how best we can tackle that situation once that law going to affect right. how we going to be able to generate the revenues mm -hmm. from a French number plate car being rented on the Dutch side yeah. and stuff like that, vice versa. Um, those are things that we need to look at because there is a lot of them mm -hmm. that is being rented on the Dutch side. Um, they carry Dutch licenses, mm -hmm. by the way. Some of them in the days were so smart. They would have a license on the Dutch side for 200 plates. 
they would only probably put 50 plates Dutch and 150 mm. French plate because in those days, okay. they never used to change a plate. Right. You keep one plate for the car, even today. So that has always been an issue yeah. that had been plaguing, let's say, the economy on the overall. Um, we don't know if they was paying any taxes on the French side for the French cars that it was renting on the Dutch mm. side neither. So even that too, that was not controlled for the French side, um, that they're making money on the Dutch side but not reporting it on the French side, or they're making money on the Dutch side, not reporting it on the, the Dutch side. The only thing I will say here is that when it, when it comes to rentals, I really feel that it has to be controlled. But if I'm at the airport and I'm going home and a car comes up... Well, for me, French anyone comes, I'm going to take I and would, go with it. It don't make a difference for me. I wouldn't look at the French and Dutch. Um, no, thing. that I wouldn't look at. That that's, some people would look at. I mean. But for me, I would just take any taxi, yeah. any, any vehicle and go um, that comes up, that is in line, any vehicle, taxi vehicle that is in line, I would take it and go with it. It's just that the, the rental is a whole different That's a whole different that's what I feel something like, that yeah, what it is yeah. um, at the end of the day. Now, um, your, your colleagues are still there debating the budget. You're going to vote for the budget? Well, definitely, Oral. I will support the budget. Mm. Um, I always said this budget would have been our budget if the, the coalition had remained with the three political parties. Uh -huh. um, we would have not had the opportunity, maybe, to put the things in this budget that we would have wanted. It was the budget. Because we were having discussion with the same Minister of Finance when we was putting the governing program for the government at that time. So the budget that is being presented now is basically almost the same budget that we would have been able to present um, on the floor of parliament. So that is the reason when I look at the budget, there's nothing in it that I say that I could put in a put for the people that I would like to see at this time. But you could rest assured as long as I have an input in the budget in 2016, that budget must reflect the needs of the people as much as possible, where that budget is, not like what this budget presents. Mm -hmm. This budget now has a lot of areas where social help is not in it. Um, I think it was a mistake that too many ministers keep changing. Oh, okay. Too many people keep changing and nobody stay focused on what was in the best interest for our people. And if politicians is not there, who's going to carry out that budget in there? Any minister or any whosoever would make changes mm -hmm. because they want to balance a budget, but forgetting the social aspect of this country. Uh, before I before we go, I have to mention this because the ombudsman is having an open house on Thursday yes, between I heard that. 10 and 4 p.m. So go out to the ombudsman, see what they're doing there. That's this coming Thursday from 10 to 4 p.m. on the Ecomi with Richardson Street, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. because it's important that everybody knows what the ombudsman right. does in this country. Don't underestimate the power of the ombudsman. If you have an issue with government, that she can handle that and fight that issue for you and give you good guidance when you was promised a mm -hmm. license, when you was promised one thing or the other, ombudsman make sure it's done. Because I saw it happen for some people yeah. that they won the case against government. We other time, 20 seconds. I, Oral, I want to thank you. Thank the people of St. Martin. Uh -huh. Give us this opportunity for us to see as USP party what it is we're going to do for you in this governing term. I want to thank all our supporters, all of the people who call me and congratulate me. Even those who have a problem with me joining the government, don't get upset. Just give me that opportunity to show you that mm -hmm. the U.S. party is going to do great things for justice well, for St. Martin. It was nice tonight. They were all polite. Well, um, definitely it was totally <laughs> different than the other program that was set up on me. But nevertheless, I love that type of program. <laughs> all right. Thanks for coming. Much success. All Thank right. you, Earl. Okay. See you all next time. Good night. Take care. Bye.